This is what we think the Aryan invasion in Indian subcontinent would look like. Well, not even close. Why? Because it never happened. Yes, never happened. And today, we look at the evidence and research done so far to prove this. Hi guys, my name is Harry and thank you for joining in for another video. Please subscribe and hit the bell if you would like history stuff and like the video to show your support. Before we debunk the Aryan invasion, first let's look at what was the Aryan invasion theory. Aryan invasion theory was introduced by Max Miller in 1853, which said that Aryans invaded India from Central Asia and destroyed the Indus Valley civilization and defeated Dravidians, then native people of Indus Valley. This defeat dragged the Dravidians southwards. This theory was proposed to help the European powers justify their act of colonizing the rest of the world and impose an idea of European superiority. Adolf Hitler also used the same theory to push this agenda to justify the Holocaust during World War II, stating that they were a pure race and descendants of Aryans. Even after India's independence, the politicians never bothered of validating or dismissing this theory because it was easy for them to divide and rule. But as there is a saying, truth never dies. Slowly and steadily, the genetic and archaeological studies started raising questions against the Aryan invasion theory. Or recently, instead of using Aryan invasion, they renamed it to Aryan migration theory. Just like tomato and tomato. But let's look at the discoveries and let's uncover the untold. The research published in Cell, one of the world's top journals, not only set aside the Aryan migration theory, but also notes that the hunters gatherers of Southeast Asia changed into farming communities of their own and were the inhabitants of the Harappan civilization. DNA samples extracted from a skeleton of a woman and 11 others buried in Rakhigadi, Haryana shows that the migration was outwards from India, not inwards. It was found that the DNA was carried from India to today's Iran and Turkmenistan. If you would like to know more about out of India migration, you can check my last video after this. Uh, the link is in the description. This analysis gave out a new theory, the out of India theory. Vedas, the oldest known text in the world, mentions the word Arya for the very first time. And it means someone who is a gentleman and a man of authority. Like we use sir today, Arya was a way to address. Now we have proof that Veda dates farther back than we thought. They are around 6000 BC or older, which predates the Aryan invasion theory by 5000 years. So the Harappan civilization was indeed the Vedic civilization, an ancestral homeland of today's Central Asia and Europeans. Now let's look at some archaeological evidence. The oldest Harappan site excavated is in Bhirana, Haryana. That is dated at least 9,500 years old. Based on the evidence that we have found, swastika seals, female statue with bangles and sindhur, shivlingam statues, and a lot of other Indian symbols. This makes it very clear that there is an unbroken cultural continuity between the Indian and Harappan people. As the cultural continuity goes back to the very beginning of the civilization and possibly even before that. Now let's look at some of the evidence from Vedas. Well, according to the Aryan invasion theory, the Vedas were written right after they conquer India, somewhere in 1500 BC. However, when we examine the Vedas, it doesn't include any mention or even evidence of any kind of war or conquest or even any mention of any ancestral land from where they came from. So in Rig Veda, there is no evidence that they arrived to the subcontinent. The geographic horizon of Vedas is listed as the Sapt Sindhu region. That is from Madhya Pradesh to Gandhar, today's Gandhar. Hymns in Rig Veda show that composers considered themselves native to the Sapt Sindhu region. And we find in detail mention of local flora and fauna of not only the Sapt Sindhu region, but they were familiar with eastern parts of India. On the other hand, there is no reference of foreign rivers or plants or animals. Hence, it's very clear that the text of Rig Veda 
and its composers were native to the Sapsindhu region. Now let's look at the linguistic evidence from outside the Indian subcontinent to get an idea of a prox period of Rig Veda. Mitanni Kingdom, which is today's Iraq and Syria, somewhere between 1500 to 1300 BC. This kingdom is special because their kings were of Indo-Aryan origin because they spoke Sanskrit and have left behind Sanskrit scriptures and writings. When we compare the Sanskrit record found in Mitanni, like their vocabulary and the way of writing and phrases, it matches writing of new Vedic script and later Vedic language and were completely absent from older Rig Vedas. So this provides us evidence that the connection between Mitanni and India was during a later Vedic period and was not present during the early and mid-Vedic phase. I have already briefly talked about possible dating of Vedas in my previous video, so I won't get into the details. But soon, I will make a detailed video on dating Vedas. Now let's look at some literary evidence of westwards Indo-Aryan migration. The Dhruyu clan is recorded to have migrated towards the north and into Central Asia. The Anu clan is recorded to have fled towards west after being defeated in the Battle of Ten Kings, which is today's Afghanistan and later towards Iran and further. Then we have evidence from a Vedic text called Bhudhyana Shrota Sutra. This text records the westward migration of the king called Amavasu. It states that he migrated westwards and his people were Gandhari, Parshu and Aratta. Here Gandhari is Afghanistan or today's Kandhar. We know it very well that Gandhar region was part of India till Muslim invasions. Parshu are the Persians and Aratta are possibly the Armenians. So it's clear that we have literary evidence of westward migration of Indo-Aryans. Finally, let's look at a mythological story of a westward expansion in Vedas, and it's also a linguistic evidence. Rig Vedas refer to river goddess called Danu. She was mother of the Danava clan. Indians are very familiar with stories of war between Danavas and Devas, where Danavas were defeated and banished. Well, this was a short story, but it doesn't end here. The word Danu in Sanskrit means fluid or drop, and the old Iranian word for river is Danu. A lot of European rivers are named after Danu, like Donabe, Dnieper, Neister, Don, Donets, Dunajek, Devina, Dogava, and Daisna. These rivers flow all across Eastern and Central Europe. So these rivers trace the gradual westward movements of Danava clan. But where did they eventually end up? Well, According to Irish and Celtic mythology, Irish and Celtic people are descendants of a river goddess called Danu. So here we have mythological evidence and linguistic evidence of another westward migration to the farthest western land of Ireland. What we have seen thus far is that there is a huge amount of genetic, archaeological, literal and linguistic evidence of Indian migration westwards, which is exactly the opposite of the otherwise Aryan invasion theory. But I would not conclude it here. I leave it for you to decide. Thanks a lot for staying till the end. And please do not forget to like and subscribe as it really motivates me. And do comment what video would you like me to make next.